to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sorry, I was just noting I have all these beverages on this day. You have a full bladder? Um, yeah. no, I just relieved myself of how long I guess. I'm okay. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Should I hold one of these? Yeah, okay. hold, hold. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to... I think I'm just curious about something about you. Oh, okay. And it's uh, your passion for Woody Allen. So Yes. And so I kind of want to explore that a little bit. Sure. I, <laughs> I can talk about that. If you could transport back in time, which Woody Allen film would you cast yourself in? Oh, God. <laughs> um, Annie Hall. But I... But I wouldn't because it's Diane Keaton and it couldn't be anything other yeah. than Diane Keaton. I mean, just, I think it's really because, I mean, it's hard to say I would want to be in it. It's just... It's sort of just another way of asking, you know, is that like a fave? Is that your favorite? You know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a well-worn favorite, but it's also uh -huh. a well-worn favorite for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's great. And she's amazing and he's amazing and i love the way it looks and i love the way it feels and it's sad and it's funny and it's generous it's everything i want movies to be every yeah it's rich although someone told me recently they were like did you realize that nanny hall they're only together for a year and i was like no i never thought about that because i think mm -hmm. when you watch it i think it's a perfect film to watch also when you're a teenager because it's this projection into adult relationships that you can't mm -hmm. know yet mm -hmm. and um yeah it's just it's great it's a great film mm -hmm. um and now you you made you made to run with love y yes i i love doing to run with love but i it's you know whenever you do things with your idols it goes too fast and you always yeah. feel like you're somehow flubbing it or not experiencing it fully yeah it's like the prom yeah yeah it's hard to feel like you really went to the prom. Did you feel that way with working with Whit Stillman as well? Yep, I did. If uh -huh. I went too quick. I mean, it was a little different because it was... I had s so much to do in that movie that it was also... The workload was really heavy and the shooting schedule was really tight. So even though it went really fast and I felt like I didn't get a chance to totally savor it it also felt like I was con constantly playing catch up so I didn't have time to feel nervous as much. And the Woody Allen experience was more, there was more space and time for me to sit in my hotel room in Rome and wondering why I wasn't experiencing this more fully. <laughs> but that's just, I mean, I think that's a, a life issue <laughs> for people <laughs> too, is how to be in the uh -huh. moment. Like, uh -huh. actually I can definitely relate to that. Uh, so, uh, going from the Whit Stillman film yeah. to uh, Francis Ha, uh, I noticed that both films your character grapples with relationships with uh, with women. Yes, and uh, and as I was wondering, and when you were you were well, obviously you didn't write the Whit Stillman film, but no, but uh, you wrote Francis Ha. Yeah. was that was that right coming out coming out of uh, Damsels in Distress? I and was already do you think that writing it when we were doing were, it. Okay, yeah, I was already writing it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that it had a direct influence on me, but it, I definitely, I love his, I love his writing. I love his films. I actually got a, he saw this movie last night and he sent me a text with, it was, it was really sweet, but it, it was, it had, it said, mm -hmm. Greta, great to see you with a two. Yeah. And, it's economical. and great was GR8. And then um, it, it was it's like a mathematical text. <laughs> yeah, it was totally, <laughs> but it was sort of like abbreviated texting for dummies or something. But it was really sweet, and yeah. he was really nice. And um, I think he really liked the film because he doesn't say he likes things if he doesn't, which is kind of painful to learn when you're actually making a movie with him because mm -hmm. he'll tell you he hated something <laughs> that you're doing, which is you're trying so hard to be good, and he walks up to you and he says, "I don't know what it is you're doing, but please never do it again." And you think. Oh my God! I've, you know I've yeah. <laughs> I'm messing up a Whit Stillman movie, but um, but I think I I really loved how precise his scripts are and how perfect this the word choice is and the rhythm of the words and um, I definitely I like written things. I like things that are right. very precisely scripted, and I've done a lot of improv in my life, but. 
at this point it's not my preferred mode <laughs> I, I i just i i i prefer ex executing and acting something that's been crafted prior yeah it kind of lets you put your energy into the acting part of it, maybe, because yeah. the script's there, right? You don't have to worry about yeah. creating you the story. You don't have to create text. text. I also, yeah. I, I'm, even though I engage in, I suppose, pretty naturalistic acting, because that's, I mean, I'm always sort of trying to find what's the most true version of this, but I don't like it. I don't like it when actors muddy up texts either. I don't like it when they add, you know, or put it in their own words or paraphrase because to me th that feels like not the point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. I mean, in some movies they encourage you to do that and they want it, you to put it in your own words. And Woody Allen did encourage us to do that. Yeah. He wanted, he would say, "Don't say my words; they're bad." Say, "Why don't you say it the way you'd say it?" But, but he would st stammer it. Like he would like, stammer it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. You, you can do it better. You, yeah. Yeah. He's a guy. Did you see that? By the way, I what? was going to try to bring this to you on, so download it and bring it to you. There's this, somebody brought to my attention the other day, this compilation of all of the stammering through all of Woody's films, like oh for 45 God. minute YouTube compilation of, of him stammering through every one of his films. That sounds kind of <laughs> It's. I watched crazy. about 10 minutes of it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, um, kind of. I I love all of his ticks. I mean, I of, of course, course I do. Yeah. I don't. They don't bother me at all in the least. You you wrote the the screenplay, right? To Francis Ha, or did you co-write? Co co you co-wrote it. Yeah. You co-wrote it. Okay. So how is then working with with uh, Noah after like these other directors that have such a they almost have their own language and world they create? Yeah. As I think Noah does too. He does. Yeah. You know? I mean. Uh, I, I mean, when we were working on Greenberg, which I didn't write, I just acted in, but um, it was my favorite script I'd ever read up until that point. And, oh, high praise. And it, it was be just beautifully written from the stage directions to the text, and I felt like I, I heard it instantly. I knew what it should sound like. I knew the rhythms, and I... Th th there's a way that he wrote that was exactly how I hope to write, which is it's kind of sounds like life, but it's just off enough to be elevated, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It sound, it's it's like movie. there's space around the words or yes. something that you can, it almost, it's like, it's like pedestrian poetry or something. Right. And there's a way that he writes that really evokes that. And I think, I love that kind of writing. And so when we mm. were writing together, I was bringing my own rhythms and my own word choice to it. But I was also, if I didn't know him and if I wasn't writing with him, he would be one of the writers I would imitate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. in a funny way, it actually worked out quite well because I was imitating with him and, and then we were working together. So then he could use me imitating him in this movie. So it's complicated. It is complicated. How did you uh, yank out uh, uh, the Francis character, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, out of you, I guess? Oh. Does that make any sense? Sure. Um, this, she's a variation I, I have a, of a number of characters, so maybe I, I start thinking, oh, this is mm -hmm. Greta Gerwig yeah. to some degree, but of course, sure. then I think, well, she's an actress, so shut up, you know? Right. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, it was kind of a different experience uh, as a writer and as an actor. As a writer, I don't have any ideas when I think about myself acting, mm -hmm. so I have to kind of forget that I'm going to act. It sounds totally goofy and douchey, but I really let the characters tell me who they are. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I was equal equally responsible for all the characters in the movie, not just Francis. So it, uh, letting all of these different people, whether it was Sophie or Lev or... Colleen or whoever it was talk that's really kind of how I write is through dialogue and then going mm -hmm. back and shaping it and making it work in a story um, and I don't know I don't know as soon as we had Francis's voice and both Noah and I hit on what she should sound like and the w way she talks and the way she moves I guess that came later. The way she moves came later, but the way she talks was definitely in the writing process. And then, mm -hmm. I don't know, we never, to be t totally honest, we never really intellectualized it. We just knew we had her. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, 
I think sometimes when you're writing or acting or directing, you probably get a little superstitious because if something's going well, you don't want to fuck with it. You don't want you don't want to spook it. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to spook the character away or spook the moment out of happening or overthink it or over talk it because mm-hmm. it feels like we knew it was there and we just didn't really want to. We didn't want to mar something that was working and so that was the experience of writing it where it's like i don't know where it came from but suddenly it was there and we both knew what it was and we didn't talk about it and we just kept writing it Mm -hmm. and then when i was acting it um it was really it really was transformed by by acting it and i think um the way he shot the film and the way i was given space in the frame to play helped a tremendous amount because I felt I felt like it was it wasn't just an emotional or an intellectual idea of a character it was like a full body it was embodied it felt like I really embodied the whole performance and that it was something that was more than just my face or my voice Mm. and Mm. that was really that was really the key to it and and being able to kind of act head to toe you don't always get to do because people usually shoot you a lot closer or shoot me a lot closer. I mean, shoot everyone a lot closer. I mean, movies tend to be shot so close and Mm. um, having uh, like almost like a 30s frame was really helpful for me. And I don't know. I I think of Francis as... like your whole body to yeah. be in the in the moment and yeah and really feel like i had the whole frame to walk around in yeah. like i could really use the whole space and we could really block it and it could really live in a physical way right which not, might not be just appealing. images you know sorry it okay. might be appealing for you because you do come from the i don't know from the theater and the yeah. er, er, early on right and and improv yeah. those two things which are all about physicality yeah that's me just riffing now I I think, I mean, I don't come from the theater in any kind of deep, important way of, like, being a Shakespearean player. You are Obi's lining your mantle, I've heard. But I, um, certainly as I think with a lot of people who act, that was my first experience of, that was the first way I could participate in it was, you know, in junior high and high school was acting in plays and... You know, even if you do it on an amateur level, <laughs> it still stays with you, that feeling. And mm. um, and in college, that was the same thing. And I mean, I really love theater. I go see it as much as I can. I really like to do more of it. You should do You should do theater. I know. I want to you know, write you a will. play. But yeah. for now, I'm just yeah. happy that people like... My favorite playwright is this woman, Annie Baker. She's the best. What did she write? She's written... She had this play up recently called uh-huh. The Flick. She had another play called Circle Mirror Transformation. Uh-huh. Was know. it here? Yeah, everything's uh, here. It was off she's Broadway? Like or b- yeah, like she's or off Broadway. Re- yeah. She's like the lady. She's young. She's a girl. Uh-huh. She's so smart. She's like Chekhov. Yeah, <laughs> she's oh well. Per- that, I'm sure she appreciates the comparison. I mean, no joke. Holy I mean, literally, crap. they compared to the n- yeah. to Chekhov in the oh. New York Times. That's not fair. I <laughs> to know. It's somebody, crazy. And right? she, she's like 29. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Um, she's awesome. Like you're Catherine Hepburn. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're better than Catherine Hepburn. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so last, I guess last thing, and that is, uh, oh, does the movie turn out kind of the way you envisioned, you guys envisioned it? Yeah, have you made the movie that, like, you yeah. wanted to make? Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly I know, I, I feel like I almost, um, and Noah actually mm-hmm. said that, mentioned this to me, he said this is the closest he's ever come to making the movie that was in his head, and he, he said it doesn't, that's not always a good thing. Sometimes, like, a movie right. surprises you like and you discover something new while actors are working on it or you're in the editing room and it changes in a way that you didn't anticipate yeah. and that doesn't mean it's bad it's just they they say about footage um you have to dance with the date that brung you yeah. like at some point you just have to use the footage you've got and sometimes it's it makes a different movie than you thought you were making and he said that this was it not only cut as close to the script as any of his movies has mm-hmm. ever cut but it also felt like what we were making the whole time and I felt the same way and we we never really talked about exactly how we wanted it to feel I remember once I I we were talking about the look of it and I said you know I I see it as you know very locked down very framed and then it's almost like a it's like a tableau that comes to life and yeah. a scene plays through yeah and then we cut away and he was like no that's how I see it don't worry that's exactly how I see it and I was like oh, okay but you know it's 
I just think we always knew what it should feel like. It feels like that. And Good. it feels like an homage and to, in some ways to the love of cinema and to New York and to, you know, and it, and so yeah. it, that's why it, how it stands out. Good. Uh, so thank you, Greta Gerwig. Francis Ha is uh, and it's opening. I think May sixteenth, seventeenth, seventeenth. Excuse me. I'll I know. Fix it, that sorry, in, I know it edit. like in my heart. Um, of I've course you do. Well, you should. Anticipating this right. for months. <laughs> I bet. No, no. Good luck with that, and we'll and uh, and you'll be, of course, at Rooftop Films this weekend, and uh, yeah. it's awesome. Awesome.